All right. I don't know. Anybody on yet? Doesn't look like it. That's good. Gives me time to get some stuff together here. Ah, oh, hey, what's what's going on? I'm uh, working on getting my chat set up here so I can see it. Now we're there. What's up, guys? What's up, everybody? How's it going today? Kyle, I'm doing good. I've got a new John Deere tractor to play with. Life is good. It's always fun when cases of tractors show up at your house. So here it is, guys. The uh, the 8RX410 um, Prestige. So this is the Prestige model. These are up on the website. So uh, if you guys want one, head on over to fortheloveoftractors.com. And then something we're going to talk about here pretty quick, I'm going to clear off a little space here, is uh, we're going to customize this bad boy with some weights. If you want one of those, well, hit me up because uh, we're going to we're gonna have these too. So anyway, yeah, Hector is HMM replicas. So yes, this is the 164th. Uh, Either that or I'm a giant, because if this was the 116th and it fit in my hands like that, that would make me huge. <laughs> Are your toolboxes up on the website? They will be, Kyle. Uh, as soon as I get, uh, well, they're painted, so as soon as I get one put together, yeah, they'll be up on the website. Faux show. All right. Question about the Prestige. Does the three-point hitch on the back move up and down? Indeed, it does. Uh, pretty easily, it will stay up. There is no quick hitch, which um, I think is a pretty big knock on it, to, to be honest with you. I don't know too many people that order a brand new you know, $400,000 tractor or whatever these things cost and don't put a quick hitch on it. But um, it does. the RAM detail is really nice, and like I said, it does stay up. So I do like that. Drawbar is... Kind of your standard Ertl draw bar. I was really hoping that uh, I was really hoping that the Prestige series would not do this, but it turns out I guess we're gonna still get that. So I, I kind of feel like the Prestige is not necessarily uh, a, a replacement for the Authentic series. I think it's just uh, what they've kind of decided to go with next, which that's okay. But uh, I, I was hoping for more detail, I guess, a little bit today. Um, that's just kind of the way it goes, so. Put a beacon on it. Yeah, it needs beacons for sure. Uh, that was definitely, uh, what I, What paint do I use? J John Deere green. You can get it, you can get it at your John Deere dealer uh, if you want green. If you want Case IH red, Case IH dealer. Your farm store will have it. Ace Hardware has it. You can get green, you can get farm paint pretty much anywhere at this point. Um, hello from Utah. What the heck are you doing in Utah, Bo? You moved on me. <laughs> How much is this going for on my website? Twenty-four fifty plus shipping. What's up, Everett? It's all right. Being late. Where is the one sixty-fourth collection? You'll get that eventually. Patience, Grasshopper. So, some other things I noticed. This thing. Seriously pivots, like seriously pivots. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's kind of crazy, actually, how much that pivots. I don't know if the real one does that much. Probably. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, but man, that's a lot. I mean, you're like you're like side hill in that thing, if uh, if you do that like that. Um, the tracks seem narrow to me. I'm sure this is realistic, and I'm sure there's a narrow option, but I almost feel like a wider track front and back would be kind of cool. Uh, so I'm sure, you know, I know Hector's, I'm sure, already working on that kit. Um, in fact, I know he is because he's already got one tore apart. It does not steer, so uh, there's that, unfortunately. Um, that This is kind of the best you got. So we need a steering kit for sure. You can see there's not a ton of detail on this axle here. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm sure there's some work to make one of these steer, especially if you're going to get your axle looking right. Uh, it's It may be a project of mine here pretty cool. I'd like to kind of have uh, pretty soon. I'd kind of like to have it steer, to be honest with you. Um, so things I'm going to do, obviously, like I talked about, we're going to stick some weights on that. We're going to do that here real soon. 
and uh, as in like in a few minutes. And then, yeah, we need flasher beacons for sure. I need to look at a picture of the real one to see where they're located. I assume it probably has two. Uh, maybe not. Maybe just one. Um, and then, um, I don't know. Other than that, handrails here, they're pretty decent. Uh, they're a little chunky, but, you know, that's not the end of the world for sure. And then um, kind of same thing over here. We've got this handrail, a little chunky, but it looks okay. Uh, lights everywhere, which I do appreciate. And then, of course, you've got your LED lights up here under the cab. Uh, the new Green Star, or whatever the heck they're calling this thing now, offset, uh, which is kind of the new thing. Um, you can get lights up here on your uh, muffler, which is kind of <laughs> kind of an interesting location for them, but I get it. Um, def and diesel fill up over here by your steps. And then uh, moving around back here, you, know, you got all sorts of you know uh, safety lighting and things like that back there. Rear end, the one thing I do like about this rear end, you do have color-coded SCV outlets. So um, that's kind of kind of nice. And this is a nice little touch, I think. Uh not going to complain too much. All in all, though, the, the look of the this tractor is great. I, I love the way these look uh, in person and, and the toy. I was kind of wondering, I was thinking about taking this apart tonight, but uh, the hood definitely just comes off, and I don't know if it's glued on and it just pulls off or if there is a screw up in here somewhere. Um, and I was kind of trying to see where the rivets or screws were that held this together. And I'll, I will say that uh, John Deere is, or Ertl has done an excellent job of hiding those. So that's uh, that's a bonus if you want to keep your tractor stock. Not so much if you want to customize it. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, um, so do you like the 2020 John Deere scheme or the old scheme? I love this scheme. I think this is cool. Yeah, I, I I really like I really like the way this looks. I love the decal. I love the kind of aggressive futuristic front end. I think it's cool. Had three on the top. Oh, okay. So there you go. I got you. All right. So that's the beacon set up there. Yeah. I mean, I definitely got to do that. Yeah, it's a nice tractor for you know twenty five bucks roughly. Um, it's a pretty solid tractor. I think these are going to be hugely collectible. Um, I just, they, they're, they're a highly anticipated release. Uh, they've kind of trickled out. So there's not like this big flood of them out there right now. I just kind of feel like, uh, they're, they're going to be a pretty collectible deal. And then of course, guys like me, we're going to tear them up and customize them, but what the heck. Now, is that a metal axle? And can we get a size comparison with another 64 scale tractor? Of course we can. And yes, this is a metal axle. So I got to give them big credit for that. Um, that looks good. How about something? I think this is comparable uh, to a uh, MT Challenger here. Uh, pretty good comparison. Uh, just some things. I mean, obviously, we don't think we're going to compare the, the two too closely because this is about a $35 tractor. Well, actually, now this is about an $18 tractor, but brand new is about a $35 tractor. And it's a $25 tractor. But, you know, of course, we got the weights up front and the hood opens and super awesome detail engine. We get kind of none of that here. Uh, handrails are appropriately sized here where they're chunky here and then of course we get a quick hitch but the hitch does not raise and lower and we get a nice looking draw bar i think that's uh maybe the difference between a spec cast tractor and an ertl tractor right now um i think a lot of us were hoping that ertl was going to go the spec cast route with this prestige series but maybe that was just us getting our expectations up i don't know so anyway there's kind of a size comparison of the two. Like I said, this is a great tractor. I mean, I know I may, may have knocked it a little bit on some things, but that's a great tractor. How is the potato digger coming slow? Is that an orange bear cat too? It is. It is a bear cat too. It's a co-op. Got to get some custom work done. Well, Caden... Shapeways search is ridiculous. That's just about the only thing I can say. Is the cab plastic? Top is definitely plastic. This is, uh, I think, mostly plastic. I don't think that's die cast, but until I pull one apart, I can't tell you for sure. I'm pretty sure this whole top section is, is plastic. Huh. 
No, that's, uh, yeah. Well, I'm glad you got a new uh, 8RX. That'll be fun. Compare compare the 8RX to the 116 scale. I don't have a 116 scale sitting here to compare it to. Uh, the 116 scale 8RX I did a review of, and it's excellent. I mean, it's a absolutely fantastic tractor. Well detailed and everything. So this is 164 scale. Are those corn choppers I see? I don't know where you see, but maybe. <laughs> My workbench is its slowly getting cleaned up. It looks a little better than it did yesterday or the day before. I've been organizing. Hey, Nathaniel. Have you done any work on the extension of the versatile body uh, for the MTS tractor? I have. I've actually kind of drawn up uh, a new center section, a new articulating joint there, Javen. So I hope to kind of have that accurate soon. That's a project that I've been working on uh, kind of myself lately while I've been sort of hiring out some other projects because I know, I don't know, that MTS project's a little bit involved. And uh, But yeah, I've got, I'm, I'm working on making those look good and correct. So I, I bought a, I just bought a case of versatile Delta tracks from uh, uh, B&B here, I don't know, a week ago, maybe two weeks ago now just to try and uh yeah, i'm gonna try to do a lot of nts conversions for the shows this year i think like it seems like a lot of people liked the one i did even if it wasn't necessarily um finished i guess or high detail so i would like to do one that's high detail i gotta get rid of that there we go so here is our weight bracket and our weight so weight bracket weight Where are you streaming right now? From my house, from my workbench. What are you going to do with the 4786? This is uh, going to get repowered. So I'm going to drop a Cummins in there and, I don't know, just kind of gussy it up. Needs, uh, needs some details, things like that. So I'm just trying to think, like, if we stuck those up here, Boy, that looks sharp. Almost need to be bigger. Almost need a bigger weight bracket there. It still look great. All right, let's see what we can do with that. What equipment do I want from Ertl this year? I'm really interested in that Patriot sprayer that they're bringing out, or whatever it's called. Um, other than that, I don't know. There's going to be some cool stuff. Have you heard when the eight, uh, when the X nine will be, out? I have not, uh, wouldn't be surprised if we don't see some sort of announcement close to the national time, but then again, it could be next year. I don't know. Uh, sometimes, sometimes deer really pushes Ertl to get those quick and then sometimes they wait a little bit but i don't know yeah yeah there's no plans from Ertl right now but like let's be honest there's going to be an x9 combine there just is will there be a john deere 7r 2020 i have no idea cut out the motor on this or cut out on the motor on this because this motor is coming out i mean that's that's the whole plan here um on this i don't know it'd be kind of a cool project actually make that hood raise and all that other stuff but you know going to do a three point for the um i don't know maybe maybe on one of them i don't know about this one necessarily if that will get a three point but maybe on one of them is that 164 scale? Yes. Everything on my workbench right now is 164 scale. Steam show last night. I bet it was hot. Oh, nice. I'll have to check that out there at Fleming Family Farms. Cool. Could you show a potato digger? Ah, uh, sure. It's not put together yet. It's just primed. But yeah, there's a potato digger. Do you want to see what uh, Small Fortune in Farm Toys looks like? There you go. That's it. 
I'll get this painted one of these days. So it's a Spudnik, so I got to come up with the Spudnik colors, which is part of my problem. I'll have to call my buddy Pierce up up there in Wisconsin and have him send me some. And then after that, uh, there's a ton of detail painting to do on this thing. So, I mean, there's a lot of work to do on that before it's ready to roll. I'd like to see, I would, I would like to see more smaller equipment too, Andrew. I really would like to see that. I think that'd be great. Can I read your last comment? Uh, no, I'm not in a place where I can scroll up, unfortunately. Working on a dealership display for my planters. Cool. Interested in seeing that for sure. That sounds awesome. How far in the red tractors book are you? I don't know. About no three quarters. Not three quarters of the way. Maybe like half the way. Of course, my first time there, John Deere was a feature. Of course. Compact tractors, yeah. All right, let's uh How many guys do you know get a tractor and within a half hour have it tore up already? <laughs> All right, let's see. This bracket goes this way. Left my glasses upstairs, making things a little more difficult. Oh, I didn't drill my hole out far enough. That's a party foul. <laughs> I will say this, that die cast is not particularly difficult to get through. That is, uh, that's some pretty thin, soft stuff. Right there. Yep, got to go a little more, though, with it. I guess it's winning right now. How many 8RXs did you order? I don't know, several cases worth? Um, you know, a, a bunch. <laughs> I hope you got another eight RX as you're turning. Don't worry, I've got it. I've got uh, I've got three cases full sitting right here next to me. So <laughs> there's there's plenty more. should have had these weights painted up already. I knew these tractors were coming today. What'd you miss, Ethan? You missed uh, you missed a look at this new 8RX uh, 410 tractor. That's what you missed. There we go. Bootiful. All right. I'm just going to kind of tack that on there. Maybe not. Super glue's on the other side of the place. Hmm. Maybe we won't tack that on there. Here's what we'll do. When in doubt, oh, I need something to open that though. It's my favorite special edition tractor. Good question. I love the red chrome uh, quad track uh, 64 scale that they brought out for the farm show a few years ago. This might be one of my favorites. Are you streaming every night this week? No. No, if I do that, I won't get anything built. And I've got quite a bit of building to do. Oh, that glue. That glue may be toast. That's that's unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. Shoot. Any guesses on your favorite model? I bet it's red. Twelve fifty six. Love twelve fifty six.
What's your rating on a WD forty? Uh, oh, there we go. Maybe. Nope. Hmm. That's that's kind of that's kind of a bummer. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that glue is toast. That's just not gonna glue anything, is it? Well, darn. Live show fail. That's how it goes. All right, there we go. So we got the bracket up there. When you say WD forty, are we talking to Alice Chalmer WD or WD forty the the uh, the lubricant? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fan of both. Look at that, guys. Now that made that tractor. That's what that tractor needed. That put some beacons on there. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Look at that. Simple. Whole new tractor. Whole new tractor. Is that the off? Is I think it's the authentic case for 50. Uh, cause it was kind of it kind of looked like vanilla ice cream. That's why they were called ice cream cab. Made your first custom and working on your farm toy display. Excellent. Always love to hear that, guys. Love to hear guys working on displays and customs. That's what we need. More of that. WD-45, gotcha. Yeah, I was going to say, because I think the WD-40, I don't know what that was. <laughs> the gold 450 Steiger is my favorite authentics, and I bet a lot of people say the same. I, yeah, I wouldn't argue with that, actually. That's, that's a great authentic. Uh, I didn't include the chasers on my authentic video just because... Uh, I don't know. I didn't think that was fair necessarily, but yeah, the gold authentic uh, 450 is excellent. I was bidding on a copper uh, case quad track on one of the auction pages on Facebook today, but or basically all weekend. But I kind of got blown out of the water on it. Two guys wanted it way more than I did. I mean, and I want it pretty bad, so you can guess. Yeah, Speccast, and nobody is really friends with uh, John Deere right now. I mean, Ertl is, but I think John Deere has decided to try and see if they can make the entire world mad at them. And I think they're doing a good job of it. <laughs> I know a lot of farms that are switching away from John Deere. That's how that's going with per John Deere. So, anyway. Oh, here you go. Have you guys seen these yet? New chopper. Pretty excited about those. Just gotta get my wheels and tires on those. This is gonna be super cool. That's what when you were saying choppers. That's what you meant. I get it now. Finally, it only took me 20 minutes to figure out what you were talking about. Wow. It's Monday. Top 10 special edition tractor video. That's a great idea. John Deere 8970. Yeah, 8970s are super cool. Top five cast spec cast tractors. That's a that would be a good one too. Boy, that could be a tough one. Those uh, 450 Steigers are getting a little harder to find these days. Why are people mad at John Deere? Well, John Deere is making it really hard if you're a farmer to work on your equipment. And, uh, I mean, that's, you know, if you're a big farmer, if you're the type of farm that's buying a fleet of these things, that you probably don't care. But if you're a little guy, people care an awful lot. And, um, anyway, people are kind of moving away from it. Uh, around here, uh, the John Deere dealers, uh, they're, they're kind of not friendly anymore. They've kind of bought up the, the friendly dealers, and now they're just big conglomerates. And so a lot of guys around here don't like that either. So, I mean, it used to be, when I say used to, I mean five years ago, you could go to the John Deere dealer and talk to the owner of the dealership. And uh, 
you know, that kind of goes a long way, especially, you know, farming is kind of a, you know, it's a down home personal sort of business. But uh, now, if you go to any of the John Deere dealers around here, the owner is who knows where because he don't live here. It's just, it's just kind of upsetting some people. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I, I hear a lot of people are kind of, they're kind of down on deer right now. And I think, uh, I'll be honest, the, the S-Series combines have had quite a bit of electrical issues and sensor issues and things like that. I think that's kind of upset some people too and soured people. Uh, I, I would love a John De- or a, an authentic 2 Plus 2. I mean, I, I think you and I both would be on that train. I'd buy cases of those too if they made them. Do you have an Authentix 7140? I do. Newest here is the 2006. Nothing wrong with that. I like Mountain Dew, but not John Deere. The STS are better combines. I agree. I agree 100%. Are they done with the Authentic? Yeah, I think so. I think we're on to this Prestige series now. Sounds like Authentic series is done. Um, or at least that's my understanding of the situation. Maybe somebody else has information and I don't, but... Oh, yeah, there was that, uh, yeah, there was that S-Series windshield issue. I forgot about that. Yep. They need a 4020 Authentics. That'd be kind of cool. I'm, that's what I'm going to do with this 3020. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dress this thing up and make it over the top cool. That's my plan. Yeah, we loved our STS Series 2. Uh, probably the best combine we ever had by far, I would say. How are how am I? I'm doing great tonight. How are you doing, Hagen? Buy a skid steer. I don't need a skid steer. What would I use one of those for? Kyle, I've got. Oh yes, you. Yeah, are you working on a skid steer, Kyle? That's right. I'll get one of yours. John Deere 4000 series tractors are definitely one of the best. They're iconic. Yeah, I mean, like, the, the 4020s, I mean, they're absolutely legendary tractors at this point. We need prestige New Holland tractors. Agreed 100%. What do you like better, John Deere or Case? I mean, honestly, I'm probably, at, at this point in my life, I'm probably a Case guy. I don't know. I, I mean, I've always, I've been a John Deere fan most of my life as well, but uh, I don't know. Whatever I'm working on at the time is probably what I'm, my favorite is. I'm a case guy because of Steiger. I mean, that's really what it boils down to. Because I'm a Steiger fanboy through and through. Get, get Speccast to do this. Oh, gosh. I can only dream of Speccast doing a 2 plus 2. Um, man, I would love to see Speccast expand into other really cool stuff. How about, like, what if Speccast just took up the Steiger line? I mean, I know it's not ever going to happen because I'm sure John Deere's going to block that and they keep trickling out Steigers every 10 years, but uh, that'd be so cool. I'd love to see a 2 plus 2 by Speccast. They would just do it right. And, um, oh, man, I can think of a million things. How about a, how about a 1206 from Speccast? Who wouldn't buy that? Kubota is up and coming. There's no question about it. Steigers, I agree, are all very iconic. Yep, I agree with that. I'd like a 164 scale Massey 1150. Oh, you and me both. Yeah. Oh my gosh, a spec cast 1150 would be fantastic. When will the new John Deere X Series combines come out? In six- I- I'm assuming soon. I mean, I I just can't imagine they're not working on them. Uh, I'd be shocked if they weren't working on them. I mean, I don't know if we'll see them this year, but I mean, I can't can't picture us not seeing them for sure next year i kind of expect an announcement sometime around national but i don't have any inside information on that so um you know i'm just guessing wheatland the 1206 how about could we just do a standard and a wheatland 1206 let's just make every variation 1206 that has ever existed how about that i'm down with that i'd buy them all i mean seriously if anybody from speccast is listening i'll buy them all I had a, I have a farmer friend of mine 
he's uh he's 83 years old he still farms he is a john deere guy through and through but he swears to me the international 1206 was the best tractor they have ever had on their farm and they've literally had probably 100 plus tractors over the years if not more he's a he's a pretty big farmer so that that's a pretty ringing endorsement of that 1206 I don't know that you'll ever see a mass produced shop or shed that's detailed. I just there's just a lot to that. I don't know. A drivable hay collector for six, that'd be pretty sweet actually. A, a, a hay collector, yeah. You should do a giveaway on that John Deere 2020. Oh, you never know. I don't know. If you guys I tell you what. So, all right. Why not? Here, if you guys, what are we? What are we at on subs on subscribers here? Are we? Uh, are we at seven thousand? What are? I don't even remember what we're at. <laughs> Some somebody look and tell me how many subscribers we are here on YouTube. Four point eight eight. Now, so we'll be okay. So we're gonna get to five thousand at the end of this month, no matter what. How about this? You guys go out. And spread the love of tractors. And if I reach 5,500 subscribers, I'll give away one of these. How about that? I think I, I think that's fair. Speaking of giveaways, by the way, Kyle and I are doing a giveaway on a Ripper. And I meant to do the video last week, and it just the week just got away from me. I'm definitely going to do it this way. Kyle made this really cool field cultivator that pulls behind an international, and you've seen it before. Well, it pulls behind anything, but you've seen it before. And um, anyway, um, we're going to give one of those away real soon, actually. So hopefully next week, or hopefully this week. I mean, it's only Monday. Yeah, I need I need likes, guys. We yeah, that helps our videos a bunch. I'm also I'm also going to just do a review video of this that I'll probably put up tomorrow. You know, so just to be kind of a general overview of the tractor and everything, you know, like I do. So the field cultivator definitely prefers the IHS, Kyle. It looks so good behind one. Some model glue. Do you guys want some dried up model glue? Uh, I'll give that away. <laughs> What's the white? What is the yellow and white four wheel drive back there? I don't see a yellow and white four-wheel drive back there. Are you talking about the co-op? That is a that's a co-op. Here's an international. Am I missing another four-wheel drive on my messy workbench? I don't know. Oh, you know what? Here's here's a here's a fun comparison. Why didn't I put that out there? Check that out. Road track versus whatever track. See, this tractor needs these tracks. That's my opinion. Those look beefy. That that make that would make this thing look mean. All right, now we got to do it. We just have to. We'll see if they fit. I bet they don't fit. But we try it. Do I have all the one sixty four scale authentics? I do. I'll be darn. Look at that. You guys didn't think it was gonna fit. That looks so much better than that, doesn't it? Or am I just like crazy here? I feel I feel like yeah, I feel like that looks ten times better. Hmm. Then I guess I could put these over here. And look at that, I just made two custom tractors. Okay, not really, but I may do that. I don't know. If I could come up with the smaller tracks. That's the problem. No self-propelled baler that I know of, that's for sure. Do you like the country tra county tractors? County tractors. Maybe I'm not familiar with those. Is there a tractor I'm not familiar with? Oh, Minneapolis? This guy? This, uh, what is this, a G940? With the loader? Yeah, that's a sweet spec cast tractor right there. You can snatch those up right now for... Low twenty dollars, roughly. 
like $22, $24. Be shop hard. Maybe less than that if you really get after it. Those are nice tractors. I'm going to duel that up as my plan one day. What program do I use to design uh, 3D? I use Fusion 360 is what I use. It needs the John Deere quick hitch, no doubt. No doubt. They're like Fords, just the same size four wheels and different names. Yeah, basically. How do you win the field cultivator? So what we're going to do to give away this field cultivator is we are going to, you have to be subscribed to me. When I do the video, you have to comment on the video. And you also have to be subscribed to Kyle, uh, which is Pumpkins Animations. And I think I want you to have to comment on his video as well. Because he, he actually made the field cultivator. And uh, if you guys do that, what I'll do is I'll randomly assign a number to everybody who uh, did that. And then um, we'll use a random number generator to pick the winner. That way it's fair. Shot you the links for the three spec cast 1206. What? There's a 12. What? Are you saying there's a 1206 from spec cast? Did I not know about this? How did I not know about this? Can you make a Steiger ST310 Panther with rice and canes for yourself? I mean, I will make any Steiger ever for myself. So I know, like, uh, it sounds silly, but one of my kind of lifelong tractor goals, and I'm a long way from there, is to have one of every Steiger model ever made. That's my goal. Um, I'm not very far along in that goal, but uh, I'll get there. I mean, it's it's just a matter of time. Will the drawing be live? Yeah, we'll probably do a live drawing on that. Well, maybe uh, kind of late in the week. That'll be a lot of fun. Okay, I look forward to checking that out, Tony, after this is over. Cause... Well, right, right. So now I'm torn between looking for SpecCast 1206s that Tony sent me or doing this live chat, and I can't do them both. <laughs> Well, I'd be buying the... I already have, Andrew. I've got uh, two of them. Here's one. So, uh, yeah. You got to get those put together. I, I wanted to start on them uh, over the weekend. Just didn't get the chance. I, I kind of got busy trying to organize, and then I was trying to knock out Will Riches and trying to get these done, and... Ugh. You... Oh, they... It, Oh, I kind of remember that Wheatland now that you mention it. All right. Now, yeah. Later, Zeke. Have a good one. Can you go up to my chat? I cannot go up, unfortunately. That's just not possible tonight. I wonder if anybody has made a Welker Farms Big Brute. Not that I'm aware of. Going to Outback Toys next month. Nice. Bring a lot of money because that place is like farm toy heaven, I hear. I've never been there, but I will someday. The older open station back there, John Deere. Mm -hmm. Oh, are you talking about the uh, 3020? Seems, seems like what you're talking about. It's gonna, so I'm going to detail this thing out. Uh, try to get some lights up under the fenders. I need to draw a fender radio. This is what I need to do. That should be pretty simple, but uh, it's something on my list to do so I can pop out some of those. I want to put a real draw bar back here. Probably duel it up, maybe. Uh, maybe make it a side console. So we'll see. I don't know. The ideas are flowing there. A steerable front end, obviously. With the Prestige, will Ertl do a regular and then a Prestige? It kind of looks like it right now, but that could be just an 8RX situation. It's got a 7720 Turbo Kit for 11 bucks. Nice. and a, Nice. That's a good pickup there, guys. Yeah. Carson, that's a good good pickup. I rebuild one into a row crop. See, yeah, that's what I would probably need to do with that 1206 is make some row crops out of it. 
Well, I ca- yeah, I forgot about that stinking Wheatland 1206. Yeah. I need to grab some of those. I, I wonder if they're uh, still out there, if they're kind of going away. Because it seems like Speccast toys only hit the mar- only last on the market for a couple years, and then they get hard to find. What are you going to do to that Ertl Dodge 2500 in the back? I don't know. I kind of wanted to put a new bed on it, but then the green light Dodges came out, and now I kind of don't want to do anything to it. I don't know. We'll see. I'll do something to it. I might throw a compressor back here and... You know, stuff like that. Just kind of dress the bed up. Maybe a fuel tank. I'm not sure. It's got potential. This is still a nice looking truck. Three hours from OT, but everyone. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I want some 164 scale zero turns. There you go, Kyle. There's a market for you. Zero turns. Mm -hmm. Hmm, that's an interesting idea. I think there's some out there, but I don't know. Got two DB90 planners in a collection for cheap. Nice. And those are sweet planners. If anybody's looking for one, I might hit up Andrew because those are cool. What am I going to do with the Navy C60? Well, uh, so this thing is getting a... Well, let me just go grab it. Be right back. So I'm going to put a tender bed on there. Still got some work to do on the frame, but uh, anyway, going to do a tender bed, kind of weather that up. It'll look cool. Should make a V85020. I agree. I should. I will. I'm looking for some 164 scale 6030s, but I'm the stagger guy. How much would it cost for you to make me one? Which one? Oh, you, the, uh, the ST310? I don't know. I'd have to build one first to figure it out. Farm Factor 3T... Steerable front fenders and three points specifically designed for those castings. You know what? I think I actually have some of their fenders now that I'm thinking about it. Farm Factor does have zero turns. I thought they might. Yeah. They're based on Gravely's. Okay, gotcha. So while we're talking international, <laughs> here's this guy. Might as well, uh, eh, I don't know where my wheels and tires went for him, or my wheels went for him anyway. There, I know where they're at. They're on the other side of the room. Speaking of Farm Factor 3D, <laughs> there's one of their <laughs> steerable front ends uh, for this guy. So two-part front rim, looks awesome. And then... Uh, Here's my rears. I may end up dueling this up, but these are the uh, last two IH rims I've got. So I have to get some more of those someday, but I'm not ready to make an order now. So there you go. Yeah, the 164 scale 6030s are hard to find. <clears throat> yeah, 1466. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to get this thing going. Uh, it's got a lot of little stuff to do to it. Filled the hood seam on it. Looks pretty uh, pretty sweet. Got to figure out a grill up here. Probably just going to scratch build one, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. All right, Andrew, I will. I would be definitely interested in that. You should make John Deere tricycle sprayers. Uh, I think Farm Factory 3D did that already. I didn't get one, unfortunately. I kind of wanted to, but I might have missed the boat on that. Oh, 116 scale. 6030. Nice. Oh, nice. 164 scale uh, shop tools. Cool. What'd you, what did I do to the 8RX? I uh, put some fender or some uh, weights on the front for now. That's uh, That's it so far. I definitely got some more stuff doing. If you guys want these, hit up uh, my website, for the love of tractors.com. They're up there. Check them out. I have like 12 projects. Yeah, I know you do, Kyle. I know you do. Rookie numbers, Kyle. I have 12 projects right here I'm working on. This isn't even the only work area I've got. <laughs> yeah. 
turned you into a versatile fan. Nothing wrong with that. I love me some versatile. <clears throat> All right. I drilled these out so that the axle would fit, and then I painted them. And guess what? It doesn't fit anymore. That's how it works. That's how it goes, fellas. You don't really want to redrill those because. But I'm going to have to. So, here we go. I have to say, if I could get my green paint to turn out as well as my red paint, I'd be in business. But I just can't get my green paint to kind of like get that kind of candy look, that uh, deep gloss look. Better than showroom is what I kind of call it. What are some of my projects? Sure. So obviously the 8RX is a new project. Uh, so 1466 uh, is a current project. This is the rear end of Kyle's Bueller Versatile. Uh, front end is uh, paints drying. And then uh, we've got an Oshkosh cab. Uh, I gotta paint that. I gotta figure out what color to paint it. I think we kind of settled on that last time, but I just haven't painted it yet. And so here is the frame for the Oshkosh. I don't have any wheels for this, so it's kind of like what am I hurrying to get this done for? Um, so I gotta call up Adam Sunken this week and get some semi tires. Let's see. I've got a service bed here. Uh, I don't know where the frame went to. Just had it a little bit ago. Now it's gone. <laughs> it must be I think I know where it's at <laughs> um, let's see I'll set those off to the side these are kind of like this is kind of a little bit of a project graveyard back here right now I've been kind of going through it cleaning it up the last several days so I don't know really just need to throw a bunch of this stuff away um, these uh, are sunflower disc chisels so those are about done I uh, had to spray the disc gangs on those. They're drying. As soon as they're drying, I'm going to put those together. There's about 20 minutes from completion, probably. All right. Uh... <laughs> Kyle, you're uh, you're going to be a pro builder one of these days uh, real soon because you're going to you're going to have like 30 projects going. Like 28 of them are never going to get done. It's just the way it goes. So I didn't know Ertl made a John Deere four. Yeah. So. They made that front wheel assist version and the two wheel drive version. They're great. Those are really great trackers. Change your paint brand. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to, I'd say. Did you ever have a Massey 1455? No, can't say I ever have. How much uh, is the Oshkosh? I don't know for sure yet. Do you ever have a clean workbench? The day I moved into this place, it was clean. Show the 8RX. Okay. I mean, it's kind of been the star of the show here today. So, obviously, we got weights, new weights and a weight bracket up there now. But, as I was saying earlier, really nice tractor. This pivots a lot. But, uh, you know, whatever. You can definitely see the plastic uh, in the... the we Or the... Uh, what do I want to call those? Bogey wheels and drive wheels. Um, other than that, you know, other than, you know, this weirdness and, uh, this ax front axle is beefy as heck and lack of quick hitch and not a very good draw bar back here. This is a pretty nice tractor. I think it's worth the 25 bucks all day long. Um, I think these are highly collectible. Um, think of these. So here's my opinion. You can tell me how I'm wrong. When the quad track John Deere came out, there was that first run, the 620s. Uh, there was like one run of them. Everybody bought them up. They were gone. They're still gone. Like you're just not going to find one. And if you are, you're going to pay a fortune for it. I think these are going to be the same way. You're going to have the toy version. It's going to be out there. But these prestige, they're going to be gone. I think. That's my opinion. Um, I don't know. I've been around the block a few times in the, earth, in the, uh, the world, so... The toy world. So have I figured out a price on the Earthmaster? I kind of want one. Well, Kyle, 
since you designed it, I figure we can work out a deal. <laughs> I think full blown retail on an Earth Master is going to be in the neighborhood of forty bucks. That's what I'm shooting for. Possibly thirty five if everything goes well. Where am I going to get decals for the fourteen? Um, Bozen has them. So hopefully they show up and they look good. I don't know for sure. I've never never gotten uh, those decals from them before, so who knows. But that's what I'm hoping. What is the truck for? Which truck? Uh, this is this is a fertilizer tender truck. This is a service truck. I was playing with weathering uh, the other day, uh, a new technique. I'm not very good at it, so uh, I don't know. This, <laughs> like this... Uh, this guy probably nobody's ever gonna want it because I kind of just rusted it up and it just looks kind of looks meh. So that's all right. You can go on Dogtown. I don't care. What is your favorite band of farm equipment? Brand, brand. So I uh, Steiger, I guess. And then if we're gonna talk short line, uh, I'm probably a Landall guy, I guess. Anyway, uh, yeah, I love lawn mowing. You bet. It's like mini farming. How can you go wrong? Have I ever seen an 8RX in real life? The front end is beefy as hell. Yeah, uh, I saw one going down the highway of all places. That's the only time I've seen one in person. I've seen the regular, the wheeled version, just the 8R410, but uh, I haven't seen the RX in person. But yeah, the front end looks beefy. That's for sure. The black one. Oh, this guy back here. Well, I'm going to convert him to four-wheel drive because you can see he, he's got a real goofy stance on there. I'm going to put some beefy tires under him, and then, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with him. We'll see. I kind of like it. Is there a 164-scale right earthquake? Yes, there is. Have I ever ordered from Windy Hill Farm Toys? No, I don't believe I have. I weathered an M2 Greenlight C60 for a TMR truck about four months ago. Yep, it's not finished. I feel you, Andrew. I feel you. The 16 row seemed a bit pricey. Oh, don't worry about that, Kyle. Those uh, those 16 row those those uh, white planters ought to be here pretty dang quick. Uh, shipping is slow as heck right now, but uh, I feel like I ought to have those within maybe the end of the week. And then I get to put one together, and then I'll really cuss you, Kyle, probably. <laughs> That's when, you know what, you buy, better buy one of those Earthmasters before I start putting together one of those white planters, because the price may go up after I start putting one together. <laughs> Just joking. Be prepared to be disappointed. The last five sets I got were not die cut properly. Yeah, I kind of wondered that, because what did I just get from them? Uh, I mean, I'd say just, like... I don't know. It's been the last the last decal order I got from them was not great. That's just all I can say there. Say it's actually okay. Cool. Yeah, I want to crawl over one of these. I'd love to drive one of these someday, but uh, I don't know. I'm I can't ever see a day we have one of those on the farm. Uh, just I don't know. Just can't see that happening. Yeah, that's all my that's all my front wheel assist tires. Boo, all my tires are on the other side of the, the shop. Shipping is yeah, no kidding. Extremely interested in a white planter. Cool. Yeah, we can we can make one happen. You're dying of laughter. <laughs> you know what? We gotta have fun and laugh and joke about all this. That's just all there is to it. Do you have a shelf model of the 8RX? I do not. Uh, I guess I need to get one just to do a comparison, right? Um, so I don't know. I'll see if I can hunt one down somewhere. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna order one and have it shipped here because no need to pay in shipping on something like that. But I don't know. Maybe the local John Deere do or have one around or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, when that 16-row gets done, if I can knock a few out, I'll put them up for sale. i got to warn you, they're not going to be cheap. Um, I mean, they're not going to be, like, stupid expensive, but they're not going to be cheap. No, nothing to be scared about, ever. It's good stuff. Good things, buddy. 
Can you show the front axle close again? Of course, yeah, be glad to. So do you want to see the underside here? Uh, so something like that, kind of super beefy. Uh, we can here. Let's just kind of give you a, a side view. I mean, I think it looks okay. Uh, they, you know, they tried to do some detail there. I don't, uh, you know, I don't think it necessarily looks bad, but yeah, it's chunky. Uh, I assume, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, because you've been closer to one of these. I assume this is a tie rod here, right? Or something similar to that? Or am I wrong? Uh, or is this, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm just not, I haven't been around one of these up close, so I, did, I just don't know yet. Time check, 750. Good to know. Good to know. What's up, Slingshot? How you doing? Hello from Syracuse. What's going on, Rick? Uh, doing great tonight. Doing great. Hope you're doing good. Have you seen any 164 scale? Uh, yeah. Chucky's got a bunch of, I say a bunch. Chucky's got some rice and canes. Chucky's precision pullers and parts. And he can fix you up with some rice and cane tires. They look, oh, hey, you know what? I got some right here. Hold up. Hold up. There you go. On a rabbit tiger. I mean, they're cool. They, they, they're they super cool. I think they're about three bucks a pair. I think it's what those run. Don't quote me on that, but it sounds about right. You being safe. Yeah, yeah, so far we are. What website do I get my tractors off of? For the love of tractors.com, of course. But uh, if not there, you know, Outback Toys probably. Uh, I get a lot from a lot of my toys. That's where, where these came from. Or B and B farm toys. That's where I get a lot of my toys. B and B farm toys. That's a rod for the steering. Okay, gotcha. Three or four inches. Jeez, that is a thick boy. Wow. Okay, cool. Any farm toy shows in Colorado? You know, I don't know. You know who you might ask there is uh, Eric Hazelhorse because he's out in Nebraska. And I think, uh, I'm trying to think of who's in Colorado. Garrett Mock is in Colorado. But uh, you might ask Eric uh, over at Rock and H, because I'm sure he could tell you. Jason, I'll knock one out. Kyle, they're about 160 pieces. Oh, if you could just hear my soul hurt when you said that. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, that's going to be fun, though. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to hire some people to put those together. After I make a video of how to put them together. Need to get someone to do a water slide full series set for the 60s. Yes, agreed. There's this huge part of me that wants to get into toy decals in a sort of professional way, and but there's an even bigger part of me that doesn't. So that's where I'm at on that. <laughs> Farm rice in Arkansas. Cool. Three dollars prepare for tires. Three dollars prepare. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. So you're 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 gonna be like six bucks a pair for rims and tires uh, from Chucky. That Chucky's tires gets expensive. That's what I was saying. Uh, the days of the fifty dollar custom tractor are just about gone. So, um, unfortunately, there that's just the way it is anymore. Because if you look at like. Yeah, okay, so you bought one of these. This is a $15 to $20 tractor. Okay, now you want to dual it up. So we got 3, 6, 9, 12. And, uh, you know, you're all of a sudden, um, oh, times two, because we we got to have rims too. So, you know, all of a sudden, we're at about $45 for one of these tractors. And uh, just like that... You know, you're not, and if you, if you've got $45 in the tractor, you're not going to sell it for five extra dollars. So does anyone like MacDon? I love MacDon. One of my favorite brands for sure. Is anyone in Pennsylvania? Yeah, we've got some people out there, uh, ever there's some, there's some guys, uh, out your way for sure. Yeah, Ethan. I, yeah, there's. A, I think there's a couple other guys that kind of tune in that are that are out your way. <laughs> there are 160 tiny pieces. That's the downside. I'm still offering a Magnum 8930 for $35 with Chucky rims and tires. Yeah, that's cool. That's a pretty good price for an 8930. Pretty good price. At least three for sure. Yeah. 
You know where I could get a Case 9180 164th? Mm. I don't off the top of my head. I can kind of look around, though, and see if I can come up with a place for you. Penn's Cave Tractor Show. Cool. <laughs> ah, this, this 8RX is super cool. I'm not going to even lie there. It's it's a cool tractor. Mm -hmm. Nope, 10-minute warning from the wifey. Does anyone sell farm toys in Florida? Wow, I have no idea. I'm going to get a Landall disc and a Ripper, maybe. Oh, if you give me till about winter time, I can get you a Landall 30-foot disc. I've got kits, but man, they are just such a pain to put together. I hate putting them together. I mean, I hate putting them together. Uh, rippers. I've been drawn on a Landall Ripper for a while. Um, I'm kind of wondering if it's maybe the quality I want is maybe above my skill level as far as 3D design goes. Uh, so it's kind of stalled for right now. But um I don't know. Maybe we'll do. Maybe maybe I can get that finished before too long too. Because I would love to have some rippers myself from Land also. Any farm toy shows coming up in Indiana? Probably not anytime soon. But of course, Lafayette is in March, which I realize is you know ten months away. But well, nine months away. But yeah, I mean, there's some good shows. I think La, uh, La Auto has a show. I wish Jeff Norton was here. He could tell us more about that. Uh, I believe they have a show uh, over there. And then, um, yeah, there's shows all around Indiana. Indiana's a good farm toy state, so you might just kind of keep an eye out. Uh, check the Toy Farmer website. I think they keep those updated pretty well. Uh, or just give it a quick Google search. Oh, yeah, I mean, absolutely, 24 25 bucks, And then, you know, I triple up a lot of tractors too, so then you get... You're into stupid money when you start throwing triples on stuff. You got like vintage or new tractors? Yes. I do. All of them. I would say my favorite era of tractor is kind of a muscle tractor era, probably. Uh, but then I also sort of like four-wheel drives. I mean, I don't sort of like four-wheel drives. I have a pretty ridiculous four-wheel drive collection. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I like tractors. It's, a, it's an addiction, and it's out of control. Elnora, Indiana has a small... Sometimes those small shows are the best shows, guys. Like, um, I know everybody, you know, goes to the big ones or wants to go to the big ones, but if you can find a small show within an hour or two of you, it's probably worth going to because, one, you've got a better chance of just kind of getting to chat with people, and, uh, two, you just never know what you're going to find at those. Some of the best finds I've ever had were at small toy shows. <laughs> oh, it's probably going to be true, Kyle. It's probably going to be true. Catch you later, number one farmer. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Ten minutes from you. You got to go to a show ten minutes from you. I wish I had a show ten minutes from me. I'd go every day. They'd, they'd have to kick me out. No, they wouldn't, because the dealers would just be licking their chops when I walked in. Probably they'd be they'd be like, "Look at this sucker back for more." Yeah, I mean that's doable. Probably the best. I'm trying to think of what the best way to do a, like a case, you know, ninety one eighty or whatever. Ninety. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what the best way to do that is. Will the sunflowers be for sale? Are they all accounted for? Um, I I could probably sell one. Let me probably sell one. How long does shipping take from Florida? Depends on uh, I don't know a lot of things. I think because uh, shipping is messed up right now. I was just actually in a chat. I don't know, not more than an hour ago with several farm toy dealers, and we were talking about the trials and tribulations of shipping farm toys right now. So it was kind of interesting. The red tractor, yeah, this one is a 120, uh, not a 1206. Boy, I've got 1206 on the brain now. You know, the first thing I'm doing when I get off here is going to find some of those spec gas 1206 Wheatlands, right? So... 
<laughs> anyway, this is a 1466 is what that's going to be. And this is a 4786. So. Burnett Farm Toys and Windy Hill. Those are, those are two of the best dealers you could possibly have at a toy show. That's awesome. So, yeah, that, that, I would definitely go every day because... Yeah, you can't beat that. Uh, Chris Burnett is as nice a guy as you can get, and I've never heard a bad thing about Windy Hill. I got to talk to the Windy Hill guys a little bit at Lafayette, but just real briefly, but super nice people. Will you be on Discord? I think I will, Kyle. Try to do a little Discord tonight. Uh, sounds fun. I think I'm going to shoot some paint on some uh, weights, I think is plan A. So... I've got three brackets here. Might as well. Because uh, i got a feeling uh, there's going to be some guys that want some of these. And uh, i got a couple other. I want to put some flasher beacons on. So I need to get some of those kind of whipped up here. Like I said, I'm going to have to find a picture. But uh, these are on a mirror. But, uh, you know, flasher beacon, something like that. I have to take the mirror, mirror off, obviously. But not a problem. That's what it makes snippers for. My sunflower is still not here. I'm hoping the mailman is not a farm toy collector. I hear you. <laughs> yeah, be patient uh, on that. That uh, on things shipping out right now, guys, is crazy. So, yeah, I have a 7088 without a bin extension and no door. I broke as a kid. <laughs> I don't know. That could be an interesting parts uh, parts combine there. I don't think I can do a Discord call because I've got some work to do, uh, but I can I can chat for a while on Discord for sure. So, all right, all right, guys, I better I better get off here though. I gotta pack up some stuff and uh, and uh, like I said, if you're wanting an 8RX, head over to the website. If you want a custom 8RX, well, that's the place to get those too. So, anyway, there you go. So I will catch you all later. And thanks for joining me, and uh, I will do a review of this, have that up tomorrow, mm -hmm. I hope, if all goes well, and uh, we'll see what the rest of the week, we're going to do the giveaway later this week, stay tuned for that, that's going to be super cool, uh, the the Field Cultivator giveaway, and if you guys can get me to 5,500 YouTube subscribers, I don't know, when, when are we going to, we need to set a cutoff date, otherwise it's just, it's just going to happen naturally, what is the date, middle of July, how about by... How about by August 7th, which is my parents' anniversary, if you can get me to 5,500 YouTube subscribers, get out there and spread the word, by August 7th, I will give away an 8RX Prestige. So there you go. Heck, I might even sign the tractor or the box. How about that? It'll be like super special edition. Anyway, <laughs> all right, guys. That's right, 5,500. Here we come. Go do it, guys. Let's just throw out a, like an impossible goal. If you can get me the 6,000 by August 7th, I'll give you a custom one. I'll give away a custom one. So there you go. All right, guys. Have an awesome day. Thank you guys so much. Uh, what's up? Uh, yeah, what's up, South Texas? Anyway, thanks for joining, guys. Thanks for the orders on these. I think uh, we probably got some of those coming in. If you want one, for the love of tractors.com, you're not going to find one any cheaper, that's for sure. So catch you guys later. Have a great day. Happy tractor hunting.